Hello there and welcome back to another Luminar Neo video. Today we are excited to share the latest update for Luminar Neo with the number 1.13.0. This update brings many exciting features including the highly anticipated Studio Light tool. Now as usual in this video we will start by looking at the list of updates before we jump into the application where I'll show you all the new features and updates. Okay, so what does the Luminar Neo update with the number 1.13.0 brings? Now, before we start, just a quick reminder, if you want to see the full list of all the updates and details about it, head to Skylum website at skylum.com slash forward what's new slash forward Luminar Neo. Now we can jump into the list. So starting at the beginning with the updates and features that are coming for everyone. Regardless if you have the Creative Journey Pass, if you are a subscriber or if you have the lifetime version. Now from the top, we have a tool that came unexpected. We have reported on it already earlier last week. We have a full tutorial on how to use it. And this feature is the Blur tool. Blur tool allows you to easily add three types of blur to your photos. If you already seen the video, you know that it includes the Gaussian, Motion and Twisted Blur filters. Now you can adjust all of these filters using the Amount, Angle and Position Blur sliders and you can also use masking to really be creative with it. After that, we have received an update for the Panorama Stitching extension. Many people will be happy to see the fact that you can now use this extension as a part of the Lightroom plugin. So if you're using Luminar Neo as a plugin for your Lightroom Classic, then now you can also use the Panorama Stitching extension. On top of it, the extension now uses Auto Crop, which is applied automatically. And also there is a specific number of the photos that can be used limited to 100. Finally, there are some additional improvements to the interface of the tool. However, the most important part of the Panorama Stitching extension is the fact that you can now use it together with your Lightroom plugin version. Now moving towards a smaller update, which includes the toning tool. For those who use it just like me quite often, you know that the balance slider used to be hidden inside of the advanced settings. You had to click to unhide it. Well, now that's all gone. The slider will be available in the tool and everything will be easily accessible. After this, there is one update I'm really excited about. And that includes the magic light extension. Now you have a possibility of using a creative brush which is a little bit similar to the Erase tool. However, you can use this brush to select a specific point where you want to add this effect. So I don't know if you use this extension in past or not. However, sometimes the Magic Light extension wouldn't apply the effect to parts which you would like, maybe like a lamppost or lights on a car or in a windows, or maybe even in the reflection in the water. Well, now with this new brush, you can be very specific on where you want this effect to be applied. So for those who like to use the Magic Light extension, I think this feature is great. Additionally, we also got some updates for the Upscale extension, which now should be faster and it should use less RAM when it's processing. After that, moving on, we also have some new camera supported with the application. For example, the Canon M50, Fujifilm X-S20, Leica Q3, Nikon Z8, Sony ZV-1 Mark II. Now, finally, at the end of the list is the Studio Light tool. As you probably know, this tool is arriving today and it's arriving exclusively for Luminar Neo subscribers and Creative Journey Pass owners. So if you're one of those, you can definitely go ahead and try it. And if you want to get the most out of this tool, we already have a full tutorial on how to use it available on our YouTube channel. So look out for this video because it will really tell you and show you how to use all the controls 
inside of this too. Finally, looking at more news, here from Clever Photographer, we have updated our Luminar Neo shortcut Chi Chi. Now, there were lots of new updates coming through the year with new additional shortcuts. So we have updated the cheat sheet for Windows and Mac users, and now they are coming in printable and mobile version. So if you want to get them, just head to our website, cleverphotographer.com slash forward Luminar gift and get your version of the latest Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. Okay, so that's out of the way. We have gone through the list and now we are in Luminar Neo and we're going to look at some of the updates and features. Starting from the top of the list, let's talk about the Blur tool. So we are in Edit module. We're going to go to our main toolbar and we're going to go to the Creative section. Towards the end of the section, you will see the Blur tool. So just click on it and open it. Just one more time, as a reminder, we do have a full tutorial already on how to use it. And if you want to see it, I will link the video in a corner of your screen now. But still, very quickly, you have a choice between Gaussian, Motion and Twisted Blur. Each of the filter comes with option of Amount, Angle and the Twisted Blur also with the Place Blur Center. Well, let's go back to the Gaussian Blur and test this image is a great example of what you can do with tool like this. We have our subject in a foreground on a separate layer. We have removed the background with our background removal tool. And now we have a new background. However, looking at it, it doesn't look natural. The background is too much in focus, too sharp, and our subject is getting lost. So really, all we need to do is to select the background layer jump into the Blur tool, select the Gaussian filter and just increase the amount. Now it is really up to you how blurry you want it to have. You can go all the way or you can just be very gentle just to create a little bit of nice depth and that's it. Don't forget that just like all the tools in Luminar Neo, you can use this tool in a combination with masking, as well as the fact that you can apply multiple different blur tools at the same time. All you would do, you would close the tool, open it again and keep adding new layers of this tool. Next, we're going to look at my favorite update for the Magic Light AI extension. To see it, we need to go into our main toolbar, open the extension and just like in the past, increase the intensity slider. Once we do that, the extension scan the image, find the sources of light and apply the effect. Of course, that you can go through the different settings to adjust the look of the effect. However, in past, you really rely on the extension to find the sources of light. If the extension didn't recognize one, you couldn't add it. So just like in this example here, let me zoom in. We have uh, two sources of light next to each other. One was recognized and the other one wasn't. In past, you couldn't do nothing. However, this is where the new brush step in. So what we can do, we can go into the brush control, click on add and adjust the size of the brush. Now we want a brush which is just a little bit bigger than the source of light, just like here. Once we're happy, we just click once. And just like that, you can see that we have added another star and another piece of the magic light AI effect here. So it's really simple. Let's say that we would like to add it here and here. So let's zoom in even further. We're going to bring the brush down and now let's just brush over this light source right here and this one as well. And just like that, we have two more. So cool, but that's not the end. Let's say that we actually want this star effect only on the street lights and we don't want them on these lights. Well, for this, really simple. All we need to do is to go inside of our brush control, click on delete. We can even increase the brush size. And just like always, you can use the bracket keys to adjust the brush and just brush over these areas. And just like that, they will disappear. And that doesn't apply only to the ones that you have added. 
you can even remove the ones that were added initially by the Magic Light AI. Again, just to fix it, you click on Add, adjust the size of the brush, paint over the light, and that's it. And finally, it's time to look at the highly anticipated Studio Light tool. Now, if you want to learn more about this tool and go deep into all the controls that come with it, then watch the tutorial I will link in a corner of the screen now, which really describe every single slider, button, and drop-down box in this tool. However, still, let's have a look at it. Now, to access it, we need to go into our main toolbar, then go into the portrait section, and here we can click on the studio light. Now, the interface is a little bit different, or actually really a lot different from the initial beta version, and I think it's much better. What you do, you start by increasing the amount slider, and basically the application goes and look for the initial mask of the person. After that, you go and adjust the general scene. You can adjust the brightness of the scene. You can adjust the smoothness of the light. If you bring it down, it's really smooth. If you bring it up, it's really rough. And then you can adjust the contrast of the overall scene. So you can really play around with that. And already with the combination of these three sliders, you can do a lot. Moving back into this section, this is where you can add additional four different light sources. So in overall, you can have a five light sources in one tool. The advantage of doing that is that they're going to all share the general settings for the scene. So let's go ahead and hover over our image, and you will see a white dot which you can position around as the first light source. We can bring the amount down a little bit if we want to, and after that, we can click on the plus sign, and that will create another light. So that's the second light. You can see that it's selected. It has a blue circle on it, and we can position it around. Now, when I'm positioning it, you can see it doesn't do nothing. And the reason is that we need to go back and increase and add the amount. So let's go somewhere here. And you can continue like that. In fact, you don't actually have to go back to the tool to add the source. All you need to do is to find the position where you want to add it and click. After that, again, you can position it around and you can also adjust it individually based on what you need. Coming back to our tool, here are the three different light sources. You can select them here and you can also right click on them and you can choose to hide or remove the specific light source. When you select the light source and you on the actual image, you can also right click on it here and select the same options, hide or remove. So we have ended up with just the one. Let's bring it down here, increase the amount, and let's have a look at the hue, saturation and depth. Here we can increase the saturation and we can adjust the color of the light. You can use the hue slider and really go anywhere from red, yellow, green, blue, purple, whatever works for your project. If you like to keep the light simple, just don't use the saturation and continue. Finally, in the basic setup, we have the depth slider and really how it works, when you take the depth slider and slide it towards the left, you take in the light away from the main subject and when you do the opposite, you will get the light closer to the subject. So in this case, towards the face. Let's reset it. And quickly, we can open the light customization where you have the chance to adjust the pattern of the light. So you can choose between none, strips and dots. And after that, you can also apply texture, texture to the light. So you can choose with some of the presets or you can add your own texture by using the Add Custom. Once you do that, you have a chance to adjust the scale of the texture, and also you can then position the texture around your light source. So you can do all of that. When you finish, you can just close the tool, apply it, and continue. So the tool, just like all the other tools here in Luminar Neo, have the reset button, you can see the before and after, and of course that it has the traditional masking option where you can use all the different tools here to adjust the mask of this effect. And that's all the news for today. 
Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future news or updates. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name was Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.